Yo, this is Forgetter, and you're watching Purple World on Do Over Dome. All that I wanna do is get away to buy a micro. All that I want from you is just run for me like I run for you. What's good, Do Over Dome? Purple World episode 106. Stupidity is at its finest, and I just literally, thank God I realized a minute in, was not pressing record. Um... I'm not going to rephrase it so it doesn't come across as natural. Basically, man of many talents, familiar face in the studio. I still repeated it anyways. Dude that is a killer at videos, killer at clothes making, Mr. Forgetter. Hell yeah, Forgetter dude. Studios. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me on here, bro. It's it huge, good. bro. I appreciate it. My bad I'm making you literally just sit here and repeat yourself. <laughs> no, dude, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. I understand, bro. You don't understand how many videos I've done where I've thought I was filming something and I wasn't filming. And I'm like, uh, oh, shit, we got to run that back. I bet you're quick. loving that FX3 because of the recording light. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, it's amazing. You cannot miss equipment. No, like, no, it's awesome, it. dude. Uh, the best bro. thing. Like, but what's good? I know we just talked off camera or fucking on camera, <laughs> yeah. off recording yep. because the fucking audio wasn't going. But thank you again. Like I just said before, pulling up literally, we scheduled this interview last night at like 11 o'clock at night. True. And it's like eight <laughs> o'clock right now. Yeah. We're sitting there doing it's it. It's like less than 24 hours. We're doing Straight it. Up, yep. Bro. Like, yeah. But how's everything been going? Dude, good. I've just been staying busy doing videos, you know, doing VFX stuff, mainly what I do. Just chilling, you know, trying to stay busy with stuff. Uh, yeah. What about you? <laughs> Bro, same thing, staying busy. I just shot my first video uh, two days ago, actually. For real? Two days ago, I just shot my first video. Yeah. Are you going to edit it, too? I already edited it. No way. <laughs> were you excited? You yeah, were excited? Bro, you literally. Like, yeah. I probably got like three or four hours of sleep this whole week, and then last night finally finished it at like five in the morning, bro. Just locked in. Yeah, I still gotta like finalize the grade and shit, but I did the sequencing. But that's awesome, yeah, dude. That's awesome. But <laughs> everybody watching this, a little breakdown because I be getting off topic as fuck. So I just gotta get the immediate just rundown <laughs> yeah. questions out the way yeah, before yeah, yeah. we get sidetracked. Um, brief little rundown, just who you are as a person, what your craft is, just. Introduce Forgetter. <laughs> yeah, so um, my name's Forgetter on Instagram. That's kind of like my alias, but my real name's Ryan. Um, I'm 24 years old. I do videography, and I'm a VFX artist. So, um, yeah, I just like being on a computer, filming music videos, editing, stuff like that. And, yeah, that's really what I do. <laughs> uh, how'd you get into this shit in the first place? Um, honestly, it was kind of, it was kind of random. It was during COVID time. I wasn't doing anything. I had a lot of money from stimulus checks and stuff like that. <laughs> the stimulus um, babies, bro. Yeah, straight up, straight up. It really, COVID blessed me with this stuff. Like COVID, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be doing this right now. But, um, I always had a camera. I had a Sony a7, just like a straight a7. That thing came out in like 2011. Bro, I haven't probably. even heard of somebody that had just the a7. A7 twos is like the oldest. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, dude. So um, I used to do photography before all this. I was, oh, you were a photographer? For yeah, I was big into like urban exploring. So I would go out into like the city and get on rooftops and do like abandoned oh, buildings and stuff like that. I would not picture that. Yeah, <laughs> so that was like how it all started with the camera, at least for me. I was like 15, like going in the city like every night, going on roofs of buildings and like abandoned crazy things. Yeah. And then um, it was during covid I actually tried making music, which is funny. Really? I started trying to do music, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for like a good year or so. And then I had my camera, and then I had a computer, and then I sucked at music. So I was like, what else can I do in the music yeah. industry? So then videos was always something that interested me because I had a camera. So I was like, fuck it. Like, let's run the videos. And um, I didn't start filming until like a year after, but I started doing VFX first. So I just did really? all editing first. Yeah, that's during fun. COVID times. And then I started filming. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's like backwards as shit for yeah. a video. The whole journey, it seems like, was backwards. Photo editing and then fucking video last final. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck, bro? So weird. <laughs> I got to salute you too, bro. Anytime that somebody just straight up says their failed music journey and is like, bro, being honest with yourself, salute to you. For oh, that. hell yeah. Like, yeah, bro. I still have all my music out there. Like, <laughs> really? Like, yeah, I don't I even, even know that it. you were an artist, bro. No, I honestly, I never like posted it. Like, uh, if like if people know about it, it was on my Instagram. Had like two hundred followers. Bro. So you're a real one if you do knew that I made. If you knew that I made music. Jesus Christ. But yeah, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yep. Dog. What the fuck? So, yeah. what made you? Obviously, you just said music. You wanted to do something music in general, but why? Music videos specifically. Why didn't you go like the commercial route or whatever? Um, you have so many different avenues you could have gone. 
Yeah, so music videos, I don't know. I just always had, like, a visual eye. I've always liked art and things like that. I always was, like, into art in high school, like, actual, like, physical art, like, drawing and painting and stuff like that. And, um, like, the music side of things just seemed so hard to me, like, recording myself and even, like, mixing and then producing. Like, I just thought that I had no talent in that whatsoever. So the videos, I was just, like, I mean, everyone needs a music video, so I was like, "Shit, like, why not? Why not uh, capitalize on this and just fucking run with it?" And I did, and then yeah, that's how it that's how it is. Uh, how did you start doing effects first? Like, how did you find ways to do that in the first place? Because if you weren't shooting yourself, how were you finding work for that? Honestly, um, I was like big into like the underground scene at the time in like 2021, early 2022, where it was like this VFX and videographer named Speeder. And shout out Speeder, honestly, he's a huge reason why I started this. And I've even told him afterwards, I'm like, dude, I'm like, if it wasn't seeing your work, working with all these artists, it like nothing would ever happen. But honestly, the video just started was because I wanted to like get into working with musicians. Like I loved music so much where I was like, I need to find a way to be friends with these artists. And basically, so I was like, I need to do these videos. So, um... Yeah, the editing just kind of started where, um, like, I don't know, I just picked up my computer one day, downloaded After Effects was the first thing I started, and then um, I had a friend who lived in Seattle, his name's Mayhamp, he's an artist as well, and he just reached out to me and he was like, dude, like, if you're doing VFX, do you want to do this video for me? And it was my first video I ever did, and I was so nervous, and he had, like, 2,000, 3,000 followers at the time. And I was so scared because I'm like, this is a huge, like, I need to make this big. Yeah. This is a big platform for me. And I did that video, and he loved it, and his friends saw it, and his friends were like, holy shit, I want a video too. And then it kind of just sent off from there where, honestly, if I didn't do that one video, then I don't think any of it would have, like, ever happened. Bruh. Yeah. How did you go about nav navigating, like, doing the effects and stuff? Um. So you're telling me you didn't, like, fuck around with anything else at first? It was just a music video, really? Yeah, 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 all music video stuff. Right. Um, My first ever edit was actually a music video, like, not even, like, a test. Like, I didn't okay. even, like, test out footage. It was, like, someone sent me a music video, and I edited it, and I was, like, oh, shit. I was, like, I can do this somewhat. <laughs> and then I started doing more, like, just, like, experimental edits to, like, create, like, my craft or, like, create my style, kind yeah. of, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Man? That's so ass backwards and shouldn't have worked doing I After know, Effects dude, before anything, bro. I explain this to everyone and they're like, "What the fuck?" They're like, "How did that?" They're like, "How does that even happen?" I was just telling him, bro, because how I'm trying to get like more in my video bag right now. I opened up After Effects for the first time at like five in the morning last night when I was done, and then I just clicked out. I'm like, "This is learning curve for another night." One thing, if anyone knows anything about After Effects. I started sequencing and doing everything in After Effects. I never bounced from Dude. Premiere to After Effects, which you say that to someone and you're like, that's you're like a fucking serial killer. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, how, how are you doing it all? Dude. But yeah, I start to finish everything I do. I sequence, I line up my timeline, everything in After Effects. You're a nut, Still, bro. yeah. <laughs> you're a fucking yeah. nut, bro. It's just the workflow. Once you find a workflow, it's like, if you break that, it's so hard to learn yeah. something once you've done it for like two years where I'm like, I mean, I guess that's how I learned. So Bro, that's yeah. still crazy, though. Yeah, I'm doing everything in After Effects. That, <laughs> that does sound like some crazy person shit, bro. Yeah. What the fuck? So how did you get good with it, though? Because it, well, it sounds like right away you kind of just naturally were good at it. Was that kind of? Do you um, feel like naturally you just had a talent for it? I I don't want to say I naturally had a talent for it, but I feel like I was just good at like figuring out what fit what for a visual where like I still right now I don't think I'm nearly as close as good as I am as I'm gonna get if you know what I mean yeah. but I feel like I just like I saw a lot of videos and I saw things that like shouldn't have been there or like effects that were just corny or things like that where I realized that like if you have some good effects like less can speak more where it's not just like a bunch of shit thrown on a video yeah. if that makes sense where i feel like i realized that at an early point and i was like just don't go crazy just try to make what looks good good and that's it let the video speak for itself so i feel like having that knowledge it kind of made me realize from like the get-go that like oh don't do this crazy shit and it's gonna look good so that's why i feel like um like kind of how it's like 
rolled off really quick how I guess you could say I got good fast but no I don't know I don't think I got good fast I don't think I'm good now <laughs> but oh, <bro. laughs> shut up you're definitely fucking good now bro. I appreciate it I appreciate that, it dog. you're tripping about that it's so funny though because like that's part I, I've shot like a couple of videos before but this was the first time that I shot like an actual like thought out one mm -hmm. but the way that you were talking about just critiquing other videos that's why I always wanted to do it too because I just yeah. watch music videos and just see how much shit I'm like bro Especially yeah. with the corny effects that you're saying. I'm going to ask you your opinion on that. Like, what is too much effects? Obviously, it's hard because we don't have, like, a visual representation directly in front of us. But I feel like that's the killer of most videos. Too much effects is honestly, like, when you can't see, like, an artist's face. Like, bro, <laughs> like, there's some videos where there's so much going on where you don't even know, like, which one's the artist in the video. Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, you just need to, like... You need to understand that there's like a time and a place for each video where like it depends on the sound of the song and things like that. Like if the song's really crazy and it deserves that VFX, then give it that. But if it doesn't deserve that, then maybe tone it down a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. How much do you think that it helped in your craft learning the effects part of it first? Cause oh, huge. Bro. Yeah, huge. <laughs> definitely. Because honestly, it's harder with the camera because I'll present to people like, oh, I film videos, I film videos, but people think of me as just doing like VFX where I'm like, no, like I can do both. Like I yeah. can do a good filming and I can do good VFX too. Where like learning the VFX was definitely huge because that's like what pays me my money right now. It's like I do basically my full time job right now is just doing VFX commissions yeah. just from people like all around the world, that's which is great. awesome. Yeah. How'd you so, go about getting, I mean, keep talking, my bad. No, yeah, no, just like VFX is awesome. It pays me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> How'd you go about building that clientele, though? Um, dude, it was honestly super, like, sporadic and random and just crazy. I'm just on my phone 24-7. <laughs> I'm constantly trying to network with people. Um, yeah, just hitting people up. Honestly, the biggest thing you can do is just DM. DM people 24-7. People are going to say no. People are going to say yes. But at least you're putting your name out there. And that's the best thing that you can do as someone, as a creative in general, as a musician, as an artist, anything. Especially in the early stages, too. People need to know who you are and show your face as much as you can. But, yeah, that's how I feel like I created my um, like little platform I have now, was just showing up. Did you get dubbed by people a lot early on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had... um. Many people who I've hit up for videos who, like, kind of snub me off at first, and then I've done a fire video, and they're like, oh, yeah, we got to work. But okay. I, don't, I don't put that past anyone, though, as much as, like, that's, like, um, like, a problem in this music industry and stuff. But it's, like, I understand that myself because it's, like, if you don't show – if you're not proving yourself and if you're not putting something to the table, then why would that person want to work with you? You know what I mean? It's just, like, a, you really do have to prove yourself in this music industry to have people see you. What drags you to want to work with an artist? Um, Actually, I'm going to rephrase that a little. I want you to say what drives you to work with an artist and develop like that solid relationship where you're doing multiple videos. And then after that, I want you to give example of good clientele and terrible clientele when it comes to booking a videographer. Okay, so um, first question you said, what makes me like create that, like yeah, what that makes me want to create that bond with an artist? Honestly, it's like the initial like off rip if someone hits me up or if I hit someone up and I can just tell they're genuine and they like actually want like they want a video and they want to create something good and they like want to listen to me and hear my input, then I love that. Like I'm going to be friends with anyone. But there's some people where like they'll even hit you up, but they'll have an ego about stuff like maybe money, money's wrong in the budget and stuff like that, where there'll be some little tiffs and stuff like that. But um I mean, if the art, it's just like if the artist is solid, if they respect me, if they hear what I have to say, I mean, then it's huge. Like if, if you're going to respect what I have to say as a cameraman, then I, like, I'll work with you no matter what. But a lot of people think that they can be like backseat directors and do this or do that or have their homie on set and be like, no, 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 you got to do it this way. Yeah. That's the worst shit is when one of the artists has a random friend on set and the friend thinks that they know the camera more than I do. And I'm like, if you know the camera more than I do, then where's your fucking camera? Why aren't you shooting this music video then? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It's so, so yeah. funny you say that because <laughs> every videographer has the same complaint. Bro. Oh, yeah, dude. It's the worst, bro. It's like, fucking awful. Dude. I've seen it, too, being on set. Like, it's always the people, too, that have no idea about anything no. camera-related whatsoever. Bro. No.
It's always just a random NPC friend that <laughs> smokes 40 blunts and sits yeah, in the corner just, the whole fucking The most time, fried bro. person has an idea, and they're Literally. like, wait. They're bro, like, well, bro, we got something. Dude, that <laughs> shit fucking must be so annoying. Bro. Yeah, and it's hard as a cameraman, too, to, like, like, you're kind of the person who's trying to keep everything in control. So, like, it's kind of hard when you have people who are, like, drunk as fuck. Like, playing babysitter blah, blah, at the blah, same blah, time. Blah, blah, like, yelling, distracting you from the video, distracting the artist you're filming for. It's like, all right, dude, let's get back to where we were and let's fucking lock it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. And then what was your other question you had? Good clientele and bad clientele. It Examples kind of, of both. It kind of falls into the same, like, the, um, like, the question before, good clientele, obviously, someone who respects me, someone who wants to listen to what I have to say if I have ideas and they're, like, okay with it. A lot of times I've done videos before where I'm like, oh, I have this good idea. I want to do this. I want to do that. And the artist doesn't really care what I have to say. But I'm like, if you don't care what I have to say, then why do you have me filming the video? So I kind of get mad at things like that, which I guess you could say is by, um, bad clientele. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, I, don't, I honestly haven't had many, like, bad experiences filming videos Damn. so far, which is good. So 99% of my people have been good, good. which is nice, yeah. yeah. You've been blessed then, bro. Yeah, definitely. You've been blessed, because normally, who who was on last time? Besides, we did have someone else. I'm going to remember this later, because there was someone else, because whoever the last videographer on was the only other person to ever say that they haven't had bad experiences. Everyone else, bro, is really? just like... I mean, like, I've <laughs> definitely had some bad experiences filming, like... I mean, I've had, like, a gun pulled on me, things Jesus, like that, right. like, but not with the artist itself, like, right. just, like, just like actually, like, circumstances on. on the video shoot that just happened, yeah, things that like kinda that. That kind of works perfectly with my next question, because I ask every videographer this, any set horror stories you have, bro, that you would want to share, any <laughs> yeah. set horror stories? Um, so, yeah, I was in New York, probably in October or November, I think it was, I was shooting with Mackie, C4, Johnny Finesse, if you're familiar. That video was fire, yeah. yeah no. with, um, we were filming for C4, um, drawing a blank on the song name. But was we it were, the one with Johnny on it? It wasn't with Johnny. Was you shot on that it. video too, though, right? I shot videos for Johnny before, yeah, but you none sh- with C4 and Johnny on them at the same. Why do I feel like, what am I thinking? I'm probably thinking. Of I've shot like there. five videos for each of them. I was so going to say, might, yeah, 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 I'm probably just confusing. <laughs> yeah. It, you know? But, um, dude, it was like four in the morning. We were all staying at Mackie's apartment in New York. And um, we were staying, um, we, I think we were in Crown Heights in Brooklyn. And um, it was like four in the morning. We went outside to film. There was a church right next to Mackie's place. And it was like this sick church. We just filmed the whole video in front of this church Damn. for like three hours. Damn. And we were making noise. Like we, were, we weren't disturbing anything. Yeah. But it was like, I've never seen New York like this, which is crazy. It was like... Not a soul was on the street. No one was driving, bro. Yes, it was so late (laughs) at night. Bro, bro, it literally looked like you, like, walked outside in, like, the woods. And, like, bro, it was so fucked up. No one fucking, literally no one was on the street at all. And we were, we just finished this video. We were waiting for an Uber. We were going into New York City, like, the actual city, Midtown, to um, go to the studio. We had, like, a 5 a.m. studio session. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. So, um... We were there, and out of nowhere, we were just all, like, standing around my camera. I have, like, a monitor on my camera, and we're all looking at the footage we just filmed. And some dude just, like, came running up out of nowhere, like, straight up nowhere with a fucking magnum, like a, a revolver gun, and just was pointing it like this. And he said some shit. He was like, do you guys want to die tonight or something like that? And as soon, like, I was looking, we were all looking down at my camera. As soon as I, like, look up, I just saw a gun barrel, like a silver barrel of, like, a, like, bro, like a MW2 Call of Duty (laughs) revolver gun. Like, I've seen this gun before. And I ran. Like, I, bro, I just, I literally went like this to this. I just see the gun out of the bottom of my eyes, and I booked it. I went left for, like, 20 minutes, and I did not stop or turn around at all. And I ran into an apartment building. I have, like, a 15-pound camera rig. I have a monitor, a battery attached. I have handles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have everything on my camera, and I'm running with this thing. I'm like, dude, I can't let this thing get stolen from me because I thought he was going to rob us. And I'm like, this is my whole life. I don't even own this camera fully. I'm like, I'm still paying this off. So I'm like, fuck. And so, yeah, I run into another apartment building. I disassemble everything, put it back in my bag. We all met back up at Mackie's apartment and went right back into the Uber, and then we went to the studio. And all of us were just like, 
what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Where did everyone happened? else go? So C4 <laughs> ran the other direction. Yeah. I went left. He went right. <laughs> and then Mackie and Johnny, like, froze, I'm pretty sure. And they just stayed still. Or they might have. I don't know what they did. Honestly, oh. I forget. But all what I know is me, I went left. C4 went right. And we just went. We were like, boom. Yeah. Bro. But that was, like, the, the horror story. The, yeah, my only horror bro. story for sure. Dude, next time I see Mackie, I'm asking him about this. You have shit, to, dude. Bro. Yeah, he, I, he'll vouch for it 100%. Dude, no exaggeration. Crazy, yeah. bro. I'm picturing you and C4 running, and that's just funny. Dude, shit. I, I, don't I blame was you, so bro. scared, dude. I was I like, I've never had some shit happen like that to me bro. before where I was like, dude, this is no joke. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Bro. Dude, what the dude at Hunts told me when I bought my camera, though, because how warranty doesn't prevent theft. The dude literally at the counter was like, if someone's ever about to steal this, just gronk spike this shit off the ground and it's covered under warranty. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> that's true. Me, bro, yeah, fuck honestly, it. bro, like, that's fucked up, yeah. bro. You have any other horror stories? Obviously, I'm sure you don't have anything that crazy, but... Nothing that crazy. I've definitely had artists that were, like, too fucked up to do a video. Like, shit like that. Yeah. Like, someone too high on drugs or, like, too drunk and shit like that. Where it's, like, I'm, like, this is a drag at this point. Yeah. But other than that, no. Nothing nothing that crazy on that caliber. The thing <laughs> with that that I don't get. And artists, if you're watching this, bro, please sit here and listen for this. If you're going to spend however much money on a video, you're organizing your friend's time, the videographer's time, everything. Do not get fucked up. To the point that you cannot record your music yeah, video. Yeah, no, for bro. real. Like, I don't know how people do. Like, imagine you're spending five hundred, a thousand dollars, whatever, and then you just go blackout drunk or yeah. fucking. No, it happens, shit. bro. It happens more often I, than not no, than you I, think. No, I, I could imagine, bro. I mean, I see it with studio sessions all the time. Like, yeah. I feel guilty with that shit. I'm I like, can only imagine. You're like, oh, you're wasting your money <laughs> like, so bad. Like, you just came here to sleep. Literally, <laughs> like some of, the, some of them make good music, but some of them just be. And yeah, like, fucked. Bro, like what the. Bro. I feel like now at least it's getting better with like the drugs at least from when I yeah. first started doing videos where I don't see as many people like taking drugs or all fucked up on drugs, but definitely still a thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just so predominant in rap yeah. in general, bro. Sure. Um, what about just in general situations where you were on set and everything went horribly wrong just in the sense of you had everything planned out, picture perfect, you thought you're walking in, you get there, everything is not perfect. You have any stories like that? Um, and how do you pivot around those situations? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, one of like my probably the most recent things that happened to me was um, in December. I went to go film a video for this Boston artist. His name is um, One of One Soldier. And the song is amazing. Like, I love the song. I was so hyped to be a part of the video. It was with um, two other videographers. We were all yeah. collabing like a that's fine. three videographers on one video. What? It was my first video I would have filmed on my FX3, my brand new camera. I pulled up, I got like two or three clips, I got so high, I literally hit a dab pen and got <laughs> fried, I left my camera on in my backpack, and my camera died when we got to the next spot, and so I went, I went to go pull out my camera, and my camera was hot, like I was like, what the fuck, I was like, why is my camera hot, and it said battery exhausted, or whatever, and that means your camera's dead, and I was Bro. like, Yo, and I was with like 20, 15 people. And I, in my head, I was like high as shit, already like nervous and anxious. And I'm like, how do I explain that my camera just died? And I like, that was probably one of like my, um like Worst when everything moments, went wrong. Bro. Yeah, Dude. but there's been a lot of other times too, where like I've thought I was filming something and I didn't press record, like shit like that. Honestly, that happens to a lot of videographers, too, where, like, you think you're recording something, and you, you think you're 100% recording it, and then you go back, and then you look at it, and you're like, I wasn't recording that. Or you record it for, like, two seconds, and you accidentally stopped recording somehow. Dude. Yeah. Or um, another thing is, too, is I, um, I do a lot of things where I'll, like, film my TV screen, and I have to put my lenses in manual focus, and I'll have to put my camera in manual focus. And then when I go back to, like, a shoot, I usually film in autofocus when I'm shooting. And I'll forget to change it back to autofocus. So, actually, my last shoot with Belly that I just did here, like, five days ago, not even. Yeah. I was in manual focus. I, I was so glad I caught it. I caught it in, like, the first minute, like, as Bro. I was there. And I started filming. And I noticed I was in manual. And I was like, 
fuck. I was like, shit, I need to change this. But there's been times where I filmed a manual focus for like an hour straight in a session where I'm like, I need to work with it somehow. And thankfully the video has been in focus enough where it's never been a problem. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. That's probably my nightmares. That shit fucking focusing whenever I, I take film pics all the time and he always bro i'll give him a roll he's like dude like half of these are out of focus I'm like oh shit and i just get like <laughs> i've seen press, your film bro. photos too i think you just posted or oh, yeah, uh, i just yeah. saw someone post some of you or good that looking, you did bro. yeah those are fire good looking bro. yeah good looking dog you shoot pictures still at all because you said you started um, out taking pictures dude honestly no i haven't taken pictures in a while here and there like someone will ask me like oh do you mm. know, will you take pictures of this or that or like i'll take like my homies like fit pics with my iPhone and shit. Yeah. But other than that, no, I don't really shoot no as much with photos. It. I do have interest in it, but it's just since the video started, no one really no one wants photos. It, yeah. yeah, bro. Damn, dog. Yeah. I can't believe the FX3 is like so shitty for pictures. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like um it's Made for like video. I have um my my friend has an A7 III that I'll still use for photos if I do need to take oh, photos, bro. which is nice. But I think the A7 III is way better than the FX3 for, for photos. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by far. Yeah. yeah. That at least gives me some it's use because of the one sensor. Of these, you have more megapixels. Yeah. That always gives me some use for that, bro. Because mm -hmm. I have not touched either of those since I got the FX3. That perfect question. How much does equipment matter? <laughs> good. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, honestly. I'm not going to lie. My biggest videos and my biggest like placements, I guess you could say was with my least, uh, my least costly equipment. If that really? makes sense. Yeah. Like I, I filmed a PNB rock music video with the a seven, which is like, if you go on eBay right now and try to buy one, they're probably $200 with the lens. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So yeah, th I mean, it really, it doesn't matter. It's, it's honestly about networking. And if you can make something look decent enough where someone will like it, then yeah. But it does reach a point, I feel like, where, um, like, in yourself, you want to upgrade. Like, you, you may, like, for me, I talk myself up where I'm like, I need to upgrade to this camera or I'm not going to, like, progress. And that's where I feel like it is. If you, if you want to progress and keep doing more and more, then you'll eventually upgrade. So I feel like gear does matter to an extent. But honestly, networking and getting yourself in the right door and your face shown is the perfect thing you need to do. Yeah. I've done videos with big artists with just a VHS camera where, yeah, like literally a $90 camera. No. Yeah. Shh. Yeah. Bro. So really, it doesn't matter about the equipment in no. my opinion, but it does in a sense. How'd the fucking PMB video come about? <laughs> Dude, this is, it's a breakdown. Definitely. This is going to be a long breakdown. Okay. But um, Wait. All right. <laughs> I'm going to save that for after then because while we're on the equipment... How the fuck is the FX3 upgrade? Because I've only had mine for like three weeks, maybe Amazing. a month now. Amazing. How I'm long you had it? I've probably had, I think I got it in um, January of this year. So I've oh, had so it for like had it three for or four months. months. Yeah. But um, amazing, dude. I love it so much. Yeah. You can film in like pitch black dark and it still looks good, know, which is bro. awesome. Yeah. It's so far. Yeah. And you had, you had the A7, right? Three? I, I was the using A7 the A7 III. It wasn't mine. It was actually my friend's, Damn. but he let me borrow it whenever I needed it. Yeah. But shout out Sean. Honestly, That's biggest homie ever. Fuck, yeah. bro. He let it, me use it whenever I needed. It wasn't the S either? No, just oh, the so, A73, bro, yeah. So that jump up, because I know for me, like Ryan has the um, S3, so he's yeah, like, oh, it's like not. It's like crazy. equivalent to the yeah. FX3 though. That I know. one is, yeah. Bro, jumping from the A73 to that, bro, it's like fucking going oh, from yeah. a Civic to a Lambo. Oh bro. yeah, no, like, it is for real. Is so funny, yeah, bro. bro. Like that, it's a beautiful camera. Oh god. Yeah. Oh god, bro. Last last equipment um topic before we touch back on the PMV thing. Yeah. You ever broke any expensive camera equipment? No, thankfully I haven't broke anything. <laughs> I've definitely dropped stuff and I've def <laughs> No, 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 scratch that, scratch that. I have a um I had an Insta360 camera, which is like those 360 yeah. cameras, which I mean they're like $500, $400. They're not like crazy expensive, yeah. but I mean it's expensive Still, enough. Yeah. Um I was on stage filming a video for I was filming a concert for PNB Rock and um I was there and the camera was in my pocket and I had, I think I had this exact sweatshirt on if I'm, oh. this, I might be wrong, but I think it was this exact sweatshirt. I put it in my pocket. I went to go step off stage and the camera slid out of my pocket and one of the, it's a double sided camera. So there's like two lenses and one of the lenses shattered on one end. Yeah. So only like it's like a 180 camera now That's instead of a 360. <laughs> 180. Camera. Yeah, you can camera, use one bro. half. Yeah, 180 camera is crazy, yeah. bro. But That's other than that, 
No, yeah. I've, I mean, I've scratched shit. Like, my, I have mm. a 12 millimeter lens that's scratched as fuck just because it's Bro. so, like, wide and exposed. But, yeah, other than that, no. Damn. Damn. So, how'd the, how'd the PMB shit happen? And I didn't even know that you did multiple things with him, too. Yeah, yeah. So, I was actually, I was, like, his, like, cameraman for, like, a year, probably. That's like, crazy. Yeah. Um, it all started, bro. Back to like the COVID money thing. I had a bunch of COVID money saved up. Started doing music videos. Started editing. I started getting placements and stuff where I was like, okay, maybe this can be something that I can do. Um, I kind of went like crazy and I was like mental <laughs> and I booked a um a month stay in California yeah. with my COVID money. <laughs> And I didn't tell anyone about it probably until like two weeks before I left. And I had a full time job at this point. I didn't tell my job, Bro, didn't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even tell my friends or my mom. I didn't Yo. tell anyone in my family. I was like, I booked this shit like six months before I even went. And, and you I, didn't tell anyone I didn't for tell that long? anyone until two weeks before I went. On my life, bro. On my You're life. You're a weird dude. Weird. <laughs> weird. A weird because dude. no, no, no. Let me let me backtrack. What the fuck? It was because in my head I had a thought where I was like, Am I gonna do this or am I gonna cancel it? And it was like I had a I think with Airbnb it was like a month before I could have canceled it and got my money back or something. Yeah. And then I was like, I didn't book my flight yet. And I was like, I'll book my flight whenever. But I booked the Airbnb. So I had it. It was $2,700 for a month. And I was like, fuck That's actually it. a good price it for was, a whole yeah, month, month in LA. It's what like the an fuck? apartment. Yeah, I'm about like, to say, bro, I'm about to go out there for a month. If you were able to find Dude, it, the bro, apartment's what? still on Airbnb, and you can book it for like 1900 a month Dude. now. Dude. Yeah, bro. It, I'm, I'm about to go back to that same bro. apartment and do it. And it was in Venice Beach, the perfect spot ever. What the fuck, yeah. bro? Mm -hmm. What the fuck? All right, continue. But Yo. so what? I did that shit. In my head, I was just like, yo, I'm going to make something out of this trip. Like, I can do this. I can do this. Like, I just thought I would have gone out there, did videos. You know what I mean? So I eventually told my job, quit my job. I was like, yo, I was like, I'm going to California in a month. I can't be here. I'm going to leave. And I basically just, like, upped and left my job. <laughs> told my family. My mom was like, you're fucking crazy. Don't do it. Don't do it. I was like, yeah. no, I'm going to do it. So I went out to California, Venice Beach. I was there for probably like two weeks. Didn't do anything. I was super depressed. I was like, fuck this. Why did I even? I just wasted mad money coming out here. And I had two more weeks left. And um, I had one of my friends, Dylan. Um, he lives in the same hometown that I grew up in. And he's a year younger than me. So we were always like kind of like friends. But we were never like, we never like linked up. But we were just like friends on social media. But we were friends when we were from the same town, which is funny. And um, he saw I was out there, and he was like, dude, he was like, do you want to link up and, like, just take some pictures and whatever? Because he did camera stuff as well. Damn. So I was like, yeah, bro, let's link up. And um, he was actually on tour with Post Malone. So he Damn. was he was doing this, like, big camera stuff before yeah. I was doing. So he was on tour with Post Malone, and he was, like, working, like, affiliated with his label and stuff like that. So there was another artist on Post Malone's label named Tyler Yahweh. I don't know if you're familiar is, with him. Yeah. So... I linked up with Dylan and he was like, yo, like, I know you want to do this music video stuff. Like I've seen you on Instagram doing this. Do you want to do a music video for Tyler Yahweh? And I was like, hell yeah. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, that's why I came out here was to do music videos. So I, he told me that the day before I went and linked up with PNB rock and them. So the next day happened. I was just chilling. I was literally on the beach. I was on Venice Beach. I remember this. And it was sunset. And he texts me. And he was like, yo, um, Tyler Yahweh wants a music video filmed. And he sent me an address. And he was like, yo, pull up here. Like, I'll pay for the Uber. Or they'll pay for the Uber. And then I, like, typed in the address in my phone. And it was, like, an hour and a half away from where I was Bro. staying. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, fuck it. I was like, I, I literally... Ran back to my apartment, changed, got my camera, and, like, went straight to the address. Bro. Not even knowing where I was pulling up. And this, uh, my friend Dylan, he was like, yo, it's a studio space. Like, they're at a recording studio. I pull up to this address. It is not a recording studio. It is a home. I, I literally, <laughs> they pull into the driveway of someone's home. And I'm like, Bro. what the fuck? I'm like, this isn't a studio. And I don't know whose house I'm at. I have no idea whose house I'm at. I'm in, like... I'm an hour plus out from where I'm staying in California. I'm supposedly meeting up with Tyler Yahweh at a recording studio. And I knock on this door, literally knock on the door. I don't know who's going to answer, what's going to happen. Tyler Yahweh answers the door. 
And he's like, yo, 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 what's good, bro? Like, you want to shoot a music video? Like, Dylan sent me your shit. Like, your shit's hard, blah, blah, blah. Like, I saw you had a VHS camera. And I was like, yeah, bro. I was like, let's do it. So I get in there. And um, so I'm in the I'm in the house. I'm mad nervous. And I just literally turn the corner and PNB Rocks is on Instagram live in the kitchen. Like his phone's like propped up on like a water bottle like this. And he, I, I was like, what the fuck? I had no <laughs> and no offense to Tyler Yahweh, but I didn't know who he was. Like I, I, I fo- obviously saw him on Instagram when they hit me up and I'm like, oh, shit, he has a, a bunch of followers and stuff like that. But I didn't know who he was, honestly. But then I saw PNB Rock and I'm like, yo, what the fuck? fuck i was like i know who pme rock is and so i was i didn't know it was his house i didn't know anything and bro literally i shit you not like i walk in there i'm in his fucking house he's on instagram live and just like grabs me and like pulls me into the instagram live and i'm like dancing and it's on youtube bro like you can find this on youtube and i'm like never met him we haven't even exchanged words yet and i'm like dancing with him on his instagram live (laughs) and it was so weird And I fucking, he had, like, a little studio in his house, and, like, one of his friends was recording, and I was like, dude, I don't even know why I'm here. Like, I just, like, pulled up here thinking I was filming a music video, but no one told me anything about a music video, (laughs) so I, like, have my camera out just, like, randomly filming, and then PMB Rock saw that I had a VHS camera, and he was like, yo, what the fuck? Like, you have one of those things? I need to get a video on that ASAP, and literally that night, we, um... We went out and filmed some stuff at like eight o'clock at night, just with the VHS camera and my Sony A7, fucking Bruh. like I said before, two hundred, three hundred dollar camera, VHS and a Sony A7, and that video is on YouTube now with over a million views, That's which is crazy. crazy. But yeah, bro, I ended up like filming that video. We went to a club that night. We did shrooms that night. <laughs> we bro, and then we just hit it off. Where he was like, "Oh, this kid's cool." And then he told me to stay at his house that night. And I was like, bro, I was like, I need to go back to my apartment and sleep for like 24 hours because I'm fucking drunk, fried. (laughs) I'm all fucked up. We just went to Delilah in fucking L.A., which is like a super like upper echelon club. There was like so many famous people I met. It was for a um, Murder Beats release party. It's the the reason why we went. So like, bro, he introduced me to the most like famous people ever. P&B Rock did. And then the next day, he just texts my phone. He's like, yo, Neff, where are you at? Pull up to my crib. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I pull up to his crib again. And then it literally, for, from then on, I stayed in California for like, I extended my trip. I extended my trip again. I kept extending it because yeah. PNB Rock just wanted me out there. And we just kept filming shit. Yeah. And then we filmed um, two music videos when I was out there. One got scrapped. And then one dropped with um, him and Young Fazo, which is on YouTube right Damn, now. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then I did all of his concert stuff until he passed, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, so he would fly me out for his concerts and stuff like that. That's fucking crazy, yeah. bro. That is, like, crazy as fuck. So bro. random, bro. Like, literally, and like I said, like we were talking about before, like, does equipment matter? If I didn't have that $90 VHS camera, yeah. then that shit wouldn't have, he wouldn't have cared about my other camera. He cared about that camera. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was just the perfect being in the right place, right time, everything. Yeah. Bro, that shit is crazy. Is that how you and Akachi linked up? Through no, him? no, but it's funny because I didn't realize that Akachi like had worked with him a bunch before, but me and Akachi had talked about that like right. a bunch about um, PNB Rock, yeah. Uh, but me and Akachi, we just linked randomly, bro. He's from Sandwich and I'm from Plymouth, and oh, we're I literally like five minutes away from each Damn, other. Bro. So he told me that, and he was like, "Yo, I'm back at my house this weekend because that's his like where he grew up. He yeah. moved out or whatever." But um, I was like, dude, I was like, I literally live like 10 minutes away from you. And he just told me to pull up one day. And then I pulled up on him. Yeah. That's crazy. And that was um, like DJ Moon was at his house that weekend. ATL Smook was at his house. Just like a bunch of artists where we all just, it was crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. For showing your face is the most important thing. Like I'm telling you, if I didn't pull up there, I wouldn't have had as half of the connections I do now. That's I probably crazy. wouldn't be here if I didn't pull up there. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. That shit is so crazy. How old were you when the PNB shit happened? Um, I was 21, 22. Damn. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah. Shit, bro. That's fire. How, was, did, 
Uh oh. I was gonna something? say it was right when I started this video stuff. My first ever music video I filmed, and you might call, you can call this cap if you want, I was the PNB it. Rock video. Your first ever swear. video? Yeah. Yeah, I swear. How nervous were you? Dude, I was shitting my pants. I was so <laughs> nervous, bro. bro. What? I was literally, bro, I walked into his house and there was just like diamond plaques like lining a hallway. Like of just like these huge, like four foot tall, like golden like diamond platinum right. records of just like a hallway and it was a mansion bro it was a fat fucking house the nicest house i ever been in i was like dude i do not belong here bro. but one thing about pnb rock is he was like the most humble and most welcoming person where he like bro like he literally would text me and be like yo how you doing just like check up on you like he would check up on you all the time bro it was so real where like Rest in peace, for real. Rest yeah. in peace, PMB Rock. But he like, seemed like a solid ass. Yeah, dude. super solid. Media, yeah, bro. he didn't have no ego like at all. That's fine. Which is yeah. Shit, Salute to him for giving you that fucking chance, bro. Early on. And dude, honestly, if that, if I never saw like a opportunity like that fall into my lap, then like I don't think I would have kept pushing at this shit. You know what I mean? Because that was so early on. Yeah. Like I don't think like I don't mean to keep dragging this, but I don't think I people didn't. understand. I was like here with like. 200 Instagram followers and he somehow saw my page and wanted to work That's with me and then I crazy. went up like I'm, I don't have like a lot of followers now but I mean things just went like whoop right, right after away. and I had other artists like a list artists like messaging me in my DMs, just asking me for like yo can you film me day to day can, or day to day type shit Bruh. like can you do some vlogs for me and shit like that yeah Bruh. and he blessed me for real I was yeah. gonna say what after that you didn't tell anyone about your trip before. What was everyone's reactions after the trip? And then also <laughs> just the work surge afterwards. What was it like? Um, dude, so I didn't tell anyone about the trip. Um, I obviously told my friends like a week before I went. I told my mom like a week before I went. Yeah. They were like, you're fucking crazy. Like, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. And then when I went out there and I actually started doing shit, like my mom, had, she didn't believe me at all. She was like, why do these people want you? Like, what Like, what do you <laughs> offer to these people? And my mom, and I understand her for it. She didn't understand, like, oh, shit. <laughs> my bad. She didn't, she didn't understand at all, like, the like the circumstances of what I was doing. And I, I got that. Like, I didn't think that, like, my friends or my family would have understood, like, offer it. Because it is weird. Like, it is weird when you're like, oh, I'm doing this, like, creative little thing. I have a camera. Like, people are like, okay, like, do you. But you're 22 years old. Like, you should get a job and shit like that. So they don't really put, like, the faith in you until, like, honestly, what it was was when I, I got flown on a private jet to a concert. And my mom was like, what the fuck? Like, why are you, how are you on a private plane right now? Like, why do they care about you? Or like being in an <laughs> airport and they like have your name on a paper for like a rental, like for your driver. Like I had crazy. drivers when I would like get picked up from the airport That's and shit. Crazy, so bro. my mom would be like, why? Like what? Like she thought like that, like I was turning into like, like a celebrity almost. And I was like, no, I was like, it's nothing <laughs> like that. But that's what kind of made her like it click in her head where she was like, oh, he's actually like doing something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Jesus Christ. How was it going? So go from not knowing shit or not, not knowing, literally shit, not yeah. doing shit. Yeah. Shoot a video with PNB, come back. Then you're getting phone out on private jets. I'm sure you just said you were getting hit up by mad AOA celebrities. What was that period like after that trip? Dude, it was weird. It was like a blur. I, I remember I made a TikTok about it. it. I literally have a TikTok on my TikTok right now. It was like um, when, when you just got flown out on a private jet, blah, 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 but you're back in your childhood bedroom doing this. and like do, It was basically saying, like, I just did the most craziest shit, but my life is still here. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Where it was like, I could be doing this, but, like, nothing changed. Like, I'm still, like, right here with no money, no nothing, <laughs> like, right. at all. Where it's, like, um, not a lot changed for me. Like, definitely, like, I mean, it was definitely cool being with those people, like, meeting a bunch of different artists and stuff like that. But it was, like, when I got back home, a lot of people still didn't, like, realize or, like, care. Like, video, I mean, like, obviously my friends and my family were, like, what the fuck? But, like, video people, like, no one was, like, hopping on it, like, right away. Because they were, like, we don't know who he is still. But then I kind of just, like, 
once I got back, I was like, I need to grind this video shit in Boston. Like, I need to fucking put this shit on the map. And then that's when I just started hitting people up, like, out of nowhere, where I was like, I'll do free music videos. Like, I'm doing free. Like, Bro, that's if, crazy. If you follow me on Instagram, like, three years ago, I literally would post a story, like, once or two years ago. Like, once a week, I'd be like, free music video, hit me up. Free music video, where I just wanted to work. Because I wanted to prove that, like, I can do this. And even though I had, like, a big artist believe in me at first, it still didn't, like, come back home with me where people were like, oh, let's work with this kid. You know what I mean? I still have to, like, kind of prove myself back here, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. Damn, bro. What are some yeah. of the other big artists that were hitting you up at the time? Any that you could say on camera? Um, Probably the biggest was, like, Sway Lee. Really? Yeah, That's Sway crazy. Lee hit me up, like, told me to come to Miami, and then, like, we talked for a little bit, and then he never hit me back. <laughs> yeah, he goes to me. Um, I had, like, people on, like, Trippy Red's team hit me up. Damn. Like, a, yeah, I, fa I had, like, a bunch of people follow me, like, just, like, random <laughs> artists just, like, follow me and stuff like that, which is cool. That's fine. Um, I met Kevin Hart's wife with PNB Rock, which is so Hart, random. Bro, that's so and she random. asked me to do some camera work for her. That's so yeah, random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just what like complete that? random shit. That's yeah. random as shit. <laughs> Kevin Hart's wife. Mm -hmm. bro, what the there was a lot of, um, like when I was out there, dude, there was so many random like bump-ins where I met like, um, like I met Murda Beats at his release party and fucking, I forget, I, I don't know the TikTok people, but, um, there was, like, one of these, like, it was, like, a table, like, TikTok stars, like, Charlie yeah. D'Amelio, and, like, those, I don't even Bro, know who their name, yeah. all at a table at this club that I was at, and, like, I would talk to them for a little bit, just shit like that, Bro. yeah, but, um, yeah, Sway Lee was probably the biggest person who DM'd me That's from crazy. after that, yeah. That's crazy, bro. What would you say now, after doing videos for a couple of years, if you had to say three videos that are your most proud pieces of work, what would those three videos be? Um, yeah, no, I got that. Pinned to my profile on Instagram, one of them's Tracy Two Mars Double Mint. He's an artist from Boston. I gotta get him on a pod. Yeah, he. That was like the first video that I like, kind of like directed, like where I had an idea, like I had a spot, I had a location, I had every like I wanted to do shots here and shots here and shots yeah. here, where I like had everything locked in my head. And then after I edited it, it's like my favorite, the best Damn. video, honestly, in my opinion. And people say the same thing where they're like, yeah, that's your, that's your best video. Damn. How long um, ago was that one? July, I think. Damn. Damn. So probably like six, I don't know. Almost ten, a year ten ago. Ten months ago. Yeah. yeah I, was fuck, say, I don't even know where we're crazy, at. It's crazy, bro. We're about to be in fucking May already, bro. Damn. Yeah, so that's one. Um, definitely the PNB Rock video is definitely in my top three, too, just because that's like legendary yeah. that I never thought I'd had. I have... Um, Fuck, the third one. That's a good question. I did a video with ATL Smook in um, Cambridge, which I really liked. That was I liked that video a lot. And then I also did this video with an artist named Ignacia XO. He's based out of Boston as well. Yeah. And um, I just love how, like, I did the VFX on that video. I like, I think that. that was, like, probably one of my best VFX I did on a video. I got to peep. I, like, added fake lightning behind him and shit. I it looks hard, yeah. Damn. Bro. Yeah. Damn, dog. What would you say right now at this current moment? Anybody watching this, you can't get your feelings here. Who's your favorite artist to work with at this current moment? Favorite artist? Honestly, I haven't been locked in with too many artists. Like, I haven't been, like, doing, like, back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back videos yeah. with people. Right now, I've kind of just been, like, focusing on VFX commissions just to, like, get money, like, yeah. honestly. But um, Belly. Like, I fuck with Belly That's OD, fire. bro. Belly's huge. That's fire. We did, um, we just shot here, like, last weekend, but, um, like, we did another video two months ago, probably, yeah. or three months ago, and he's just a real dude, bro, like, honestly, it's hard to find someone like that who's genuine, you know what I mean? Like, he's Shout truly genuine, Belly, yeah. Shout out, Belly. Yesterday, I told him that I was doing one, he's like, I'm gonna have to pull up. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't, bro. Belly's been in the background of, like, five podcasts <laughs> yeah. here already, bro. Bro pops out everywhere. Other than that, though, definitely PNB Rock. Just, like, working with him and creating that relationship, it was huge. Like, one of the realest people I've ever met, honestly. That's crazy that you worked with him for so long, bro. That, that whole story of just how that L.A. trip went for you is actually... Dude, like, I tell people that, and they don't believe me. That's like, one of they're the craziest like, what the ones I've heard, bro. Like, oh, yeah. Dude, it was honestly, like, if you don't put yourself out there and in that position, then nothing's going to come to you. Like, you know what I mean? Sure. You really do need to, like make yourself feel uncomfortable and throw yourself out of that bubble and be like, shit, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm scared and things will come to you. 
because once you crawl back in that your comfort zone and your comfort and you're comfortable, you know what I mean? Then you're not going to do anything out of your comfort zone to go elevate. <laughs> did you even end up shooting that video for Taiwa Yahweh? Yeah, I oh, did. I, so it never multiple. dropped though. It really? never dropped. Yeah. Damn. I was yeah. going to say, cause if you didn't, that would have been crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I ended up shooting for him and, um, we like, it was funny because I was supposed to originally link up with him and then PNB Rock like took me for like three weeks Bro. and then Tyler Yahweh was like I still want my video so then I like <laughs> he took me back from PNB Rock for a few weeks and then we Dude. filmed some shit Bro. and then yeah he never dropped it though damn bro. yeah that damn. was a all VHS video by really? the way that was one of the, the what I was talking about we filmed that all VHS it was like a lifestyle kind of video it was damn. almost like a vlog music video if that makes sense do you use um like a regular handy cam VHS or do you have an analog one? Um, uh, high. I have a high eight Sony. High eight yeah, so it's like um, can it's you like do the manual settings on it or no? No, bro. Uh, so we you probably can, we you probably can have change the, same the one. exposure. Like you can make it brighter or darker, but huh. you can't like set settings on it. No. Damn, no, nah, because fucking I didn't even know that there were like VHS cameras that you could manually change all the. settings I didn't on. know either, bro. I found out like two, three weeks ago, but they're like four hundred bucks. That's the thing yeah. That no, I, d I don't have one of those. Yeah, I just got like the same one as you. I think that's why I was asking. Do I'm not. Uh, I was gonna say I'm not gonna lie. Back in like 2021, when I was just getting into this, I saw someone's Instagram story who had like a Sony handy cam, and I screenshotted it, and I googled that exact model and bought it because <laughs> I was like, I know they have fire fucking clips sure. on this one, so I bought that one. Bro, yeah. Do you be shooting straight in the tapes, or do you do the SD card? Right? Straight into tapes. Straight yeah, into I tape, don't do yeah. the. I don't have like that extra. Thing. Bro, I was like thinking about doing it because I just got the clear click, but I don't know if it downsizes the quality or not. I think it upsizes the quality. Really? I think it turns it to like 720 or 1080. I, I might I be wrong though. I could be wrong. It. I gotta see, bro, because I thought that it downsizes it. It might. No, it Damn. could. I gotta check, bro. Either way, bro. Yeah, those VHS cameras, like they film on like 240p. Yeah, so when you bro. try to add them in on like a 4K timeline, Dude, you have to scale like it up. Like 462 percent, bro. Yeah. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. I shot VHS on the video. Yeah, I did, bro. Dude. It was like these clips are fucking. Tiny, but there's bro. people I don't know how kids do it. There's kids who know how to convert it into like a higher um, I think I was actually watching a video on it earlier. It's something about QuickTime recorder. That's what I use. You do? Yeah. What so, the fuck? I don't bro? know. I, don't I know. think in QuickTime you could do it. I, I was literally watching a video. Maybe I'm fried. Yeah. Damn, bro. So you don't use a clear click for it? No. You just I, do it straight in the thing? Yeah. I didn't even know, bro. I woke you wish I didn't buy mine because I didn't find out about that until today. Well, with the high eight tapes, you can keep recording on the same tape. Yeah. Like it'll re -rec it'll record over shit, but yeah. you can like keep filming over stuff. Nah, I know. And you haven't had a tape go out on you yet? I have, yeah. Oh, I was gonna oh, say, yeah. bro, because I was doing that oh, for the past many. three years, bro. And then literally, finally, like probably like three weeks ago, finally went black on me after three years. Dude, I had one of my, I had a tape that I kept filming over for probably like a year straight. Bro. And the tape like came undone oh in my, my camera. God. And I literally had, I posted on my Instagram story, like probably in, Dece I don't know when it was, like six months ago. Bro. But I had to do surgery on my fucking Jesus camera Christ. and take out all these screws and shit. Bro, I literally like had to peel this little, like it was the tape got wound up and like the me all the metal in my camera. Bro. And I had to like cut shit out, fucking yeah. I'd was, be terrified. Was I would have just brought that shit to a camera shop at yeah. that point, bro. I'd be like fuck. <laughs> but this, now bro. I know if that ever happens again, I'm like, yeah, I can fix that yeah, shit, bro. <laughs> that shit is fucking crazy, bro. Yeah, I would be fucking geek the fuck. I was up. pissed. <laughs> I was gonna and, say, and, and they're bro. cheap cameras too, which is funny. I was more mad about that than I probably would have been with like my expensive camera. Dude, the funny <laughs> thing is, I forget. Someone asked me the other day what my favorite camera was, and I was like, bro, honestly, like, the VHS is still probably, like, my favorite out yeah. of everything. Even over the FX3, as stupid as it is to say, bro. Yeah. Like, I have to say, the VHS definitely, like, is it's so good to have as, like, a fucking videographer, but it got played out a little bit. Like, it definitely got played out somewhat, but... um. Everybody did that with yeah. all the analog shit, yeah. bro. Like, Even, like, the CRT TVs and shit, yeah, the TV bro, stuff, the, yeah. The TV shit, everything got fucking blown out, bro. Yeah. Everything did. Now it's just doing it in a tasteful way. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. literally, bro. That's um, true. 
Before we get into the advice questions, I don't even know if you realize, but we're already at an hour. <laughs> oh, shit. Are we really, dude? We're at an hour. What the fuck? I know, bro. This show has been <laughs> flying by. That's why I'm like, shit. Got to keep the short attention spans fucking Yeah, in check, bro. bro. I didn't even realize. I, I thought bro, it was like 10 minutes. I didn't either until I looked down and I was like, we're at 50, 53, 54 minutes now. That's <laughs> insane. Like, I was like, bro. Wow. Um, but before I go on the advice spree, because literally the ending, that's what we'll do. I'm just asking mad like questions for people trying to be videographers and shit. Yeah. But we got to talk about the clothing brand, bro. How'd you get into making clothes in the first place? What's going on too? When's there going to be a new drop? Because I need a new fucking yeah. hoodie from there. Dude, um, it was honestly, it was just like a super random idea that I had. I was like, how can I get like my brand in a sense to be shown to more people besides videos? And I had this idea of making like a college logo kind of styled hoodie where it just looked like something like a like a Harvard yeah. University or whatever. You know what I mean? Like something simple, but something that I could see like a lot of people wearing. Because I feel like with like fashion and brands these days, a lot of people like things, but they're like too afraid to wear stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where I was like, how can I make something simple to like market myself? And so... I just found a manufacturer on um, Alibaba, I think it was, from Damn. China. Yeah, and um, I ordered 50 sweatshirts of, um, I just got, like, the Forgetter Studio sweatshirt. And uh, I sold them for, like, $40, $50, maybe. If I, was sh if I was shipping them, I think they were $50. But I paid, like, $33 per hoodie. Damn. So, like, I made, like, 6 $7 on each sweatshirt. But um, I just really wanted some way to, like, have yeah, someone like yeah. hold something that said forget her instead of like a video if that makes sense where i was like people can read this or someone can go to the studio and wear this an artist who i work with and someone's like what the fuck is that kid wearing and then they google forget her or instagram forget her yeah. and then i pop up so yeah that, that was kind of it fire. yeah fire, so i had um i made 25 at first i sold out of 25 immediately like in like the first day yeah. and then i got another 25 right after and then i sold like I think I have like three or four sweatshirts left. I honestly Damn. lost them. Like I, I lost the sweatshirts. <laughs> no, I thought I sold all of them and I like posted sold out on my Instagram. Bro. And then I literally, my brother walked in with a box in my garage. I had them in my garage and Bro. there was like three or four sweatshirts on the box still. And he was like, dude, did you know you had these in here? And I was like, Bro. no. Jesus Christ. Dude. Yeah. You made the hats too, right? No, I didn't make hats. I thought you made hats. No. Why did I think you made hats? Bro? I wish I made uh, hats soon. I hats are hats. soon. Did you help out with the bin hats or something? No, no. You didn't? Nope. I, I, I mean, those hats are fire. Those are definitely those fire. Are. Why did I think you did something with hats too? It was a Kachi's homie, Max McGuire, I think, who helped out with, with the, the hats. Yeah. Those hats were fire, bro. It's funny though, because I dead ass, I thought you were just a clothing dude. I didn't even know that it was one dude, bro. I used to just see Akachi and them wearing the forget it hoodies. I'd be like, yo, these shits are fire, and everyone had them on their stories. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? And then Ryan was like, yeah, forget her as a person. I'm like, bro, what? He's yeah. like, a videographer. I was like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah, dude. It's like, so random. A lot of people think that too. Yo, really? this is so funny. A lot of people think like, I don't, I don't post myself on Instagram a lot, and I've had, like, my profile picture as, like, an artist at times, or, like, a random, just something yeah. random, and a lot of people have been like, yo, is that you in your profile picture? And I'm like, no, I'm like, that, like, I'm like no, I'm like, that's Bro. someone who's, like, an artist from, like, 1990, or fucking, Bro. that's PMB Rock on my profile <laughs> picture, <laughs> like, that's not fucking me. Bro. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's funny, but I like that kind of being, like, the, like, the hidden the hidden face on yeah. Instagram. Like, no one really knows what I look like. Bro. If you're on my close friends, though, you'll definitely see me. Yeah. <laughs> bro, all videographers hate being on camera. It's yeah, funny, bro, I hate being on camera. <laughs> like, I hate it. It's funny, though, because literally your whole life is cameras, and yeah. then you're never in front of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's oh, so true. Bro, fucking getting on the advice tangent. First one, just get the generic one out the way. Any videographers that are just starting out right now, if they haven't picked up a camera, they don't got an editing software, they don't got anything, how do you advise they get in the music videos? Um, honestly, if you want to get into music videos and you like the, the whole idea of doing it, just do it and don't stop. And don't let anything steer you in the wrong direction. One big thing that I dealt with for a while was like looking at social media too much and judging myself from other people on social media. But if you're just starting out in this stuff, that's like the worst thing you can do because you're only gonna like make yourself think negative about yourself and you're gonna be like, no, I'm not as good as these people. Why do I wanna keep doing this? Why do I wanna keep doing that if these people are better than me? But 
there's a time and there's a place and there's a chance for everyone. And if you don't keep trying 100%, then you're not going to hit that time or place or chance that you're going to get. So I just have to say, if you're just starting out, just go 100. Like, don't stop. Don't take your foot off the gas, bro. For real. What yeah. Do you advise them not to do. Um, well, actually, that kind of that no, you already a, answered that. It's a good question. You don't answered that kind of. But don't be too egotistical. Like I see a lot of artists or a lot of VFX artists or videographers right now who just start out and they're like, "I ain't charging anything less than a thousand dollars a video." And I'm like, "You're not gonna get any <laughs> clients if you're charging a thousand dollars and you don't have a video on your Instagram to prove," which is a big problem. Where I'm in like group chats with like other videographers and um, VFX artists. And they'll say these prices in the group chats. And I'm like, dude, you're charging way too high. And I'm like, you're a 16-year-old kid wanting $2,000 for a video. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a 24. I'm an adult. I have to pay bills and shit. And I'm like, I'm not charging nearly as much as you are because you're not going to get any clients. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Where you kind of have to, like right now, I know that there's a lot more to come for me. But I know I'm kind of at this like weird, like stagnant stage where I'll still have to take on videos that the budget's too low just because I need the money. Like, you know what I mean? Where don't ever get, like, too, like, big-headed and think that, like, you, the money, like, you only need the money. You know what I mean? Because getting those placements, even if they're not paying you at all or even if they're not paying you enough, those are going to do a lot more than just chasing the check. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you determine your prices? Tricky question. <laughs> that is a good question because my prices fluctuate a lot, honestly. Like, I'll have, um, like, it depends, it, flash on, sale. It, dep <laughs> it depends on my bank account. <laughs> it, depends on, it depends on my number in my bank account. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll, if my bank account's good, I'll be like, shit, yeah, we're up in, we're up in the price a little bit. But if, if it goes down, I'm like... Yeah, flat. <laughs> we're on a fire sale. Yeah, we're doing a fire sale. <laughs> bro, got the fucking fire For real, sale, bro. Ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, bro. Ten points, bro. Mm -hmm. Ten points. Unlimited mystery box spins. Yeah, <laughs> bro. But on, no, um, seriously though, it's like it depends if the artist comes to me with like a, a treatment or some like big plans where I'm gonna need to like look into rental spaces or things like that. Then obviously the budget's gonna be a little more than yeah. like a running gun video because mainly I've just been doing running gun stuff. But, um, yeah, if someone has, like, some big budget or they have these crazy ideas where I'm going to need to, like, rent equipment or anything like that, then I'll definitely have a higher price than normal. But, yeah, I usually keep, like, a flat rate price for everyone. What do you think a good flat rate, like, it's kind of hard to pinpoint because everyone moves at different po points. But if someone's literally doing their first video, they haven't shot a video or anything, but they're charging. Their fir if it's your first music video and someone wants to pay you, which that's a good, that's a big thing because if it's your first, my f videos that I've done, like my first 10 music videos, I probably shot for free. You know what I mean? And I still have, I still shoot for free sometimes. I've shot for free recently. You know what I mean? It just all depends. Yeah. But um, people might get mad at me on this one, but shit, like if you're making over a hundred dollars for your first video, fuck it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, there's there's cameramen and directors and stuff who are like, you can't tell anyone less than a thousand dollars. This this that. But I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna make money off something that you're doing, I mean, if it's worth it, then it's worth it. It, it all depends on the person, really. But honestly, if you're just starting out, any money don't f don't even chase the money. You need to chase a portfolio before you chase the money. Yeah. I was going to say with that, why do you think so many videographers come in and they just instantly think that they're going to get that money? Like they instantly think they need to get paid even though they don't have a portfolio or anything. But I feel like it's just like they'll, they have in their head like, oh, I'm going to be a cameraman. Oh, I'm going to buy this camera. I'm going to buy this lens. I'm $2,000 negative right now and they need to chase the money back. You know what I mean? That's a good question. What's your thoughts on the motherfuckers that charge based off their equipment. Do you think that that's justified? Like, okay, say, like me, for instance, I have an FX3. I would have just shot my first music video yeah. two days ago. I don't see it justified whatsoever for me to be like, okay, I have an FX3. I'm going to go charge you $1,000. No. But there's mad people I see oh, that yeah. do that, bro. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I don't, so that's the thing. If you can put the work in and show the talent with your gear, I guess, then you can charge off your gear. But I think that's one of, like, the stupidest things. Yeah. Like, for example, I don't, I don't mean to, like, gas myself, but I have a lot of expensive gear. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? I have 
bunch and of the lenses fucking After Effects and, experience alone. Yeah, bro. and like, I pay, and even I pay for my subscription on After Effects. I pay for my plugins. I'm not. I don't crack. I mean, I did crack myself, but I just got a new computer, and now I can't crack them. <laughs> so I pay for everything now. But I mean, it's just like you can't like you can't put your your like you can't put that money onto someone else like oh i paid 10 grand for my setup you need to pay me 2 grand it's just like no you wanted to fucking pay that much for your camera so you like you know what i mean but it's like my prices were still the same with my a7 III. you know what i mean it's just like fuck it once I, once i see my work get better whether i have a better camera or not then i'll charge more but right now i think my works at an even price for what i'm charging you know what i mean yeah. so yeah Talk about that. When do you think it's a proper time for videographers to upgrade their camera? Um, I think it's all in you. Like, don't let anyone be like, oh, you need a new camera. You need a new camera, this, that. I think, like, for 99% of the cameramen, even if you're not shooting videos, you start out with, like, a, a Canon T3 or a Canon T5. Like, a very, like, standard camera or, like, a Sony a6 or a 6400 i don't even know the i base. have the 64 the 6400 and the t7i were literally my first two yeah. cameras you saying that and i those cameras like these starter dslr cameras are like very good to start off with but it's like once you start filming on them a bunch once you learn that full camera and once one of the biggest things is people need to learn how to shoot manually before doing anything like you need to know how to manually set iso f-stop and uh, shutter speed before anything a lot of people think they can just buy a fucking $4,000 camera and shoot on auto and think it's going to be good. No, you Does FX3 even have auto? I think it does. I, I haven't don't, even I checked. Haven't, I haven't I, shot on it. I was going to say, I, I haven't know. even checked, but I'm wondering. It, do they I even think it does. Auto it on must. Those yeah, it must. There's no way like a red has auto on it. No. There's no way. I've never way. used a red or anything, but uh, yeah. no, they can't. I, don't I was going to say, do. there's no. no way. Like, yeah. But it's funny how everybody thinks it's that easy. Yeah. But no, I just think, yeah, fucking. Learn, learn your camera, learn your work before you want to upgrade. You really need to like study this shit. It's not like something that can just like fall in your hands. Like if you look at my YouTube history, I'm still watching YouTube tutorials every single day on like <laughs> how to use the FX3, how to do this on FX3, how to do this with your gimbal, like shit like that. It's just like you need to stay learning. And then it hits a point where you're like, okay, maybe it's time to upgrade. I have the money. I just did this. I just did that. So then you upgrade. But yeah. I think a lot of people just try to buy the best at first and then think that it's going to do them the best, but then they don't know how to use it. So then they fucking never want to use it again. <laughs> gimbal or handheld shots? Because you just brought up gimbal. Good question. Um, I'm, I started off all handheld, like oh. all handheld. But right now, just recently, I've been doing all gimbal. Really? Yeah. Like what? my last video I shot was all gimbal or tripod. Oh, really? No handheld. Yeah. What? It just, it creates... My last three videos, actually, I shot all gimbal or tripod, no yeah. handheld, just because, I don't know, it creates, like, a smoother kind of, like, um, I guess you could say it looks more, like, budgeted, like yeah. a big budget video, but it also depends on the song. Like, for the Belly song I just shot, it was kind of more of, like, a slow, like, uh, like slower ethereal kind of song i guess you could say where if it's like a turned up fast paced song and you want those handheld movements then i think that's good but it all depends on the song really yeah Yeah. because my thing that i like realize i love a mix of both but i feel like sometimes too much gimbal and the way that you're saying like if you have a fast paced energy song and that whole shit is shot on a gimbal it just look weird yeah 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 it can look dry yeah Yeah, definitely sometimes it will look weird Mm -hmm. but I feel like sometimes people are like hoes when it comes to that stabilization shit, bro. Like I feel yeah. like the <laughs> yeah. little tiny imperfections are what makes it. Sometimes if you're looking at something like two, it's just like yeah, no, it's hurting my brain. <laughs> I'll even shoot handheld too sometimes, and I'll like bring it into post, and I'll try to put on like warp stabilizer and stuff, yeah. like in like After Effects and Premiere has it too. And I'm like, nah, like I don't, I want those like weird the unintentional, jitters, like bro. those weird yeah. shakes that I didn't mean to do because it just adds some like rawness to the yeah, video. Adds a character, yeah, right to it, definitely. Talk about that. How do you advise people to learn editing? If someone's never edited before, they got their first video file in front of them right now, and they don't know where the fuck to go. They don't know After Effects. <laughs> they don't know Premiere. They don't even know how to sequence. First off, if I'm going to be honest, download After Effects right away. Don't let that like learning curve scare you, because once you learn that, it's going to be so easy, because that's like the industry standard of what people edit in, where if you try to do like VFX and like 
I know people who edit in like this program called like Hit Star Video or like I've never even like heard bro of that these shit, random bro. like fucking programs where I'm like dude Hit Star why video. are you still or like why are you still in Sony Vegas in 2024 people still use it yes, bro that bro. was fucking like, MW2 yes, days I know, bro I know. wait you're joking there's I, people that genuinely use life. Sony Vegas yes, still bro people still use Sony Vegas bro I was like 12 years old <laughs> plugging know. in an Elgato into that shit I know that shit, I was bro. too like I swear to God. Bro, fuck? people are still using Sony Vegas in 2024. And I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like, down, And that's the thing, too. Dude, Premiere's like $12 a I month know, or some shit, I know. Bro. You can get a student discount and it's like $6 a month. <laughs> Sony Dude. Vegas is crazy, bro. So that's a big thing. If you're just starting out and you never did shit, start in like what is going to be good like, don't start in fucking the thing that seems easy. You know what I What's mean? What's the shit? iMovie? Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't start in iMovie and then go to here, to here, to here. Start in the hardest thing and then learn that hardest thing. And watch fucking YouTube, bro. You're about to make me jump on After Effects Dude, tonight. Dude, wa- yeah, bro, please. <laughs> like, like, please do it. Please me, do it. Bro. I know you got it in your subscription pack, bro. I do. No, <laughs> yeah. I got it. That's, I've had it for three years and literally yeah. touched it for the first time last night, bro. Dude, it, there's a, it's a learning curve, definitely, because I used to do shit in, like, Final Cut Pro, like, just, like, little, like, movie, not, like, music videos, yeah. but I've, like, edited, like, little things on my MacBook before, but it's, like, once you learn After Effects, it's, like, it's game Everything. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so easy. What's your thoughts on DaVinci? Have you messed around with it at all? Dude, a lot of people are going to flame me for this, but no. Really, <laughs> no. bro? Dude. I, my coloring game is weak as fuck. Really? Yeah. Dude, I was going to say, how do you go about coloring videos? Or do you have other people do it? Premiere. I just Premier, do it in Premiere. Yeah. I edited photos for a while. So, like, I used to do photography. And, I mean, like, the Lumetri color in Premiere After Effects is kind of similar yeah. to how, like, Lightroom is if you ever edited photos. Yeah. So it is kind of, like, somewhat similar. But, honestly, I'm, I'm trash at coloring. Damn, bro. I've used LUTs before, but recently, like, if you know what a LUT is, it's basically yeah. you just fucking drag it onto your video and it's colored for you. But, um, yeah, like, I try to color myself a lot. But, really, I'll, I'll film in, like, S-Log, and then I just make it look sharp. Like, I just bring the contrast back in and Damn. i really like that i don't do much coloring and other than that yeah i'm surprised bro because <laughs> your videos look colored <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's why I no i about. mean i'll do some like tints like i'll add like i love doing like green tints yeah. like a like if it's like a grungy video i always yeah. do like a dark green tint which makes it look kind of like grungy but yeah i keep it kind of minimal with coloring i'm definitely gonna learn that soon though i have to do you shoot on base isos no, you I sh- no, I don't do the um the base one. The base uh, on FX3. I shoot on um flexible ISO. Have you fucked up the exposure on log yet? Um yeah. Oh you yeah. Have, still, have, bro. Still. Bro. I'm, I'm, I feel like now I like looking at my camera, I don't even have that um oh my bad. I don't even have if you know on an FX3, you can turn on like a a pre um, LUT or what are they called? The, oh yeah, um, the seven oh nine. The conversion LUT. yeah, LUTs. Yeah, 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 you can turn on the Rec seven oh nine LUT to make it look normal. I don't even have that on, but in my head, as long as you're like two stops overexposed on like the um yeah. exposure meter or whatever yeah. the fuck it is, then like you're good for coloring. But like I can see if I see it in my camera, I'm like I know that's too dark or I know that's too yeah. light. Like I can just tell by now. Damn but man. there's still sometimes where I'll bring it back into like post and I'll start coloring and I'll be like, oh shit, this shot looks way darker than yeah, this one. Bro. But it's a, it, I've definitely been better at it. Yeah, dude, my biggest fear because I tried to shoot log in the past and every time I did it was just an absolute nightmare, nightmare and I fucked yeah. it up. But since I've got it. This isn't knock on, no, board. Knock on some board. Since yeah. I got the FX3, I haven't fucked up log yet, and I'm just like waiting for the day that I come back and just get grainy ass footage. Dude. I'm hoping oh. it doesn't happen, but dude, there's definitely some videos that I've done, like especially early when I first started shooting log, where the video's grainy as fuck. But I'm like, I made that the style of yeah. the video where I'm like, oh, I need to play into this grain because I'm like, this looks like fucking shit. And I'm like, <laughs> if I don't make this video look like dark and grungy and shit, then yeah. it won't be good. So anytime I've like shot like super underexposed and stuff and it was grainy, I've always flipped the video to be like some like grungy ass, like full VHS, like CRT, yeah. like crazy editing where yeah. I like it like will like fix the video in a way. You know what I mean? Damn, yeah. <laughs> But no, I've definitely had some hiccups with yeah. that. Yeah, bro, that's like my biggest nightmare. <laughs> Anytime I shoot something, I'm just like, please don't be fucking overexposed, bro. Or yeah, overexposed. How do you advise though anybody that is trying to get in the videography? How do you ex- um, 
how would you advise for them to build a client base? I don't know why I just made that question so complicated. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, building a client base, honestly, you need to be on social media, as many social like medias as possible. Like TikTok, for example, was huge for me when I first started out. I would just post like a 10 second clip of an edit that I did for a music video. And I literally like my captions would be like, would you let me edit a music video for you? Or like, what do you think of this music video or things like that? When I had no followers and it fucking shot my engagement up like crazy. Like TikTok really, there's still people today from when I posted TikToks in 2021, 2022, that'll hit me up in Instagram. Follow me on Instagram from these TikToks from two years ago and be like, Dude, I need this type of video done from you. And the what videos the are fuck? ass, like, from, like, two years ago. Bro, I'm like, bro, fuck? what? I'm like, you want this video from when I just started? I'm like, I'm way better than this now. Bro, what but, dude, fuck? yeah, TikTok was a huge thing for me starting out Damn. just to, like, give me that boost. But, um, yeah, if you're just starting out, honestly, you need to, like, cold call. Like, you really need to hit people up nonstop. Not be annoying, but just, like, have, like find out if you're in a... Find where you are. If you're in an art, if you're in a city, pe- find the people where they make music. Hit those people up, and eventually one of them's gonna say yes. You do that video for them. Another artist is gonna see that video. They're gonna say, "Oh, is this fire? Is this not fire? Do I want this?" They might say yes if it's good. Make it good. <laughs> you gotta make it good, and then boom. It's just it's honestly just like a, a domino effect. From once you do one good video, and then another artist sees that video, it's just like a, you know. Just things come, fall into your lap, kind of. Not fall into your lap. You definitely need to yeah. grind and work, but, yeah. It just naturally happens. Yeah. Kind of type shit. Two more questions after this one. Mm-hmm. If someone's trying to get in the editing work, how do you recommend that they navigate that? Similar similar answer. Honestly, really, like, networking is so huge in this industry. It, like, even as an artist in general, like, you don't need to be, a like, a VFX artist or a videographer. Like, if you're doing anything art-related, you really need to just show up, be there, show your face, talk to people, talk to people as much as you can. Cause that's the biggest thing is if people know you, then they're going to want to work with you. If you're like some like weird, like I'm honestly, I'm anxious. I'm super shy. I have horrible anxiety, but I know that in this work, like in this work field, I need to be out of my comfort zone and I push myself out of my comfort zone every single day. Like you need to force yourself to be uncomfortable if you really want to do this shit. It's like you can't just like sit there and expect things to come to you and do nothing. You really have to like do the work first off, but then also fall after f- doing that work, you need to follow up and hit these people up, talk to these people, let them know who you are. You know what I mean? That's a big facts. thing. Yeah. Spitting facts, yeah. my boy. <laughs> Trying to. facts, bro. What was I going to? Oh, add on question before I get to the other two. Mm-hmm. Ryan loves asking this because normally it's funny your name's Ryan too. Yeah, my yeah, my Ryan, Ryan bro. <laughs> He's Which, so fire too, bro. By the way, bro. like shout out Ryan, honestly. Shout out Ryan if you're watching mm-hmm. this, bro. I should have told him to pull up tonight because I was going to say he used to come on any videographer podcast I did. He used to be co host oh, with me. Oh, for real? And his favorite question to ask your opinion on the drag and drop effects. <laughs> 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 I'm curious because you're so good at effects. I'm curious what you got to say about this. <laughs> um, you might not expect this answer, but I still use them. You do? Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised, bro. Dude, if it makes my life easier, yeah. Bro, I'm surprised. A lot of things, though, like I I make my own presets like in After Effects where like I'll make my own edit, I'll save it, and then... It's, like, basically, like, a vocal preset and, like, fucking, if you do music. Like, you can yeah. send the vocal preset to anyone, whatever. So, like, if you can make a fire, like, edit on After Effects and save it and use it as a preset. So, I do that a lot where, like, I've made my own presets. But then, like, I've also, I've bought packs from people. Like, people sell editing packs where they sell, like, drag and drop presets and yeah. shit. Where it's like, if it makes my life easier and it looks good, I don't fucking care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sorry, but I'm. this is my job. Like, this is my livelihood. If yeah. it's going to make me, like, have my time be easier, then fuck it. But um, honestly, most of my videos are my, like, me doing a 98% of the yeah. effects. Yeah. But if it's a video where, like, say, if someone hits me up for, like, a VFX commission and they don't have a lot of money and I'm agreeing to it or something, then I'm like, all right, I'll give you the... The drag and drop special. <laughs> the drag and drop special. <laughs> but it still looks crazy. fire. Yeah. It still looks fire. Yeah. Bro, no. It's funny, though, because, like, some people, like, Ryan uses drag and drop for some shit. 
But some people literally will just be like so anti that. It's oh yeah, not people even get funny. pissed. Like, yeah. I, do you know Isaac? Isaac yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Isaac was on here freaking out. When oh, we asked I believe him about it. it. Yeah, I'm he. Ed- sure. I know. I can tell he edits all his videos like yeah. from scratch. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was like, bro, I'm drag and drop. But then some people are like, bro. Some people like the way that you just told me that. I've heard some people that I did not think they use drag and drop shit, and they're literally like, "Bro, everything I do is drag and drop." I just well, the thing is that. too is like I'll do a lot of drag and drop stuff, but I'll change it around where it's like it's yeah. not the exact like yeah, dropped that's what I was preset. Yeah. Where like if you drag and drop something, you can change stuff around in the settings where it won't look like how it yeah. looks on everyone else's videos. Because you can tell, bro, honestly, you can tell a lot of times where, like, you'll buy a pack off, like, a big VFX artist, and you'll see a video, and you're like, I know exactly what Ooh, that Sean. effect is named. Fast moment number four. Yeah, yes, <laughs> like, straight <laughs> up, straight up. <laughs> like, for real. Bro. Tiny tapes. Yeah, fast bro, moment. I literally just bought like, match it off tiny tapes the other yeah, day. Yeah, no. And I, I was like, yeah. bro, I'm like, the amount of videos after using it, I'm like, bro, I can just, like, see mad videos playing back yeah. that I've seen already. Like, yeah. damn, this person used it, this person did like, no, yeah, that I and ti- shout out tiny tapes. Honestly, oh God, I have a bro. few tiny tapes packs. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh God, they help out for sure. That shit's fire. Fucking second to last. What was the second to last one? Oh, biggest mistake in your videography career. If there's like something that you had the fuck up on to learn, but also you're like, damn, um, I wish I didn't fuck up on that. I feel like honestly, this like right now, I'm honestly in like a like a limbo mode with like my whole videography stuff. Where like. At first, when I first started doing this, I, like, went, like, from here to here, and I just, like, didn't stop. Like, I was, like, boom, 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 like, chasing videos, like, 24-7. But right now, I feel like I'm kind of in, like, a a hiatus, I guess you could say. Like, I kind of, like, sat back, kind of, like, took things less, not less serious, but, like, I kind of just, like, stepped back. Where right now, I feel like I'm, like, kind of regretting that I, like, wasn't going harder this past year. And, like, I definitely went through, like, a lot of shit this past year where, like, it, like, hindered me in a way where I was, like, I kind of needed to step back from the video shit. But at the same time, I'm, like, oh, you just went through all this personal shit. Like, why weren't you taking your bark harder? Like, you probably could have turned this into something way bigger. And I feel like that's probably, like, my biggest mistake is, like, why didn't I turn this, like, negative energy into positive energy? It's not too late. Yeah. No, no, it's <laughs> not. And that, that I'm trying. I'm right now trying. I'm trying to s- turn it back up. Definitely. I'm excited for the wave, yeah. man. Yeah. Wave two. <laughs> I'm wave two of the tsunami, bro. Hey, yeah. <laughs> the tsunami, bro. I need to learn a whole new, like, bag of effects. I want to get into, like, 3D and sound design God, and damn, a lot bro. of shit where I just want to come clean. If you, And that's the thing, too, bro. Like, you guys can learn anything. Everything is at your fucking fingertips. It's just if you want to put the work in. Like, you could learn fucking how to do 3D tomorrow. You could learn how to do VFX tomorrow, but it's like, do you want to dedicate your fucking time and your work and put in 8, 9, 10, 12 hour days to doing this? It's It all depends on what you want to do. And if you don't want to do it, then you're not going to do it. Things won't come to you in this shit. They won't. Speaking of things not coming to you, last question. How do you stay creative? Shooting so many videos. Dude, <laughs> it, you think, like, a lot of people think, like, oh, like, how do you do this? How do you do that? I'm, uh, bro, I, I have creative block, like, every single day. Like, it's hard. It's seriously hard. I'll do a video, and I'll sit on it for a few days, and I'm like, dude, I don't even know what the fuck to do on this. Like, I don't know what's right. I don't even know how to start this. But it's all just kind of like, um, like... You, you have to go through that, like, negativity and doubt as a creative in general, and especially as an artist in general. Like, if you're doing any type of art form, it's like, you're going to have that self-doubt in you no matter what. And I was in a, um, shout out my art teacher, first off, shout out Miss Quinn, my AP art teacher in high school. She made me read this book. And it talked about, I think it was called, like, The Artist's Failure or some shit. Hmm. And it literally, the whole book was about you're you self-doubting your art and it's like you're gonna be your biggest enemy no matter what but you just need to push through that and it's like anyone who i've talked to about this whether they're doing whatever form of art music painting videos or whatever they always think of themselves as like their biggest enemy and it's like you're always like i could be cole bennett and i'm still gonna think that like my shit's ass you know what i mean it's like you're always gonna have that little like negative thought inside of your head that's like yelling in your ear you know what i mean it's just yeah, yeah. that's like the worst but you just have to you, you need to learn how to beat that you need to learn how to get through that like get over those humps and fucking progress yeah 
<laughs> That's a great end though. You got anything else you want to add on? No, dude, I honestly don't. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I mean, oh. shout out my mom, shout out Sean, shout out Chris, shout out Jake, shout out Dylan. <laughs> I mean, shit, <laughs> shout out everyone, shout out my brother Brendan. <laughs> Fuck, shout out my sister Caitlin. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah. I'm gonna shout out, I'm gonna shout out the whole family. <laughs> You're pulling in belly. Shout out my dog, <laughs> yeah. shout out my dogs, Mia <laughs> and Molly. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> Bro went rapper mode for a yeah. quick second. What oh else am God. I missing? If I'm missing you, comment below. <laughs> Yo, that's when people get fucking pissed, bro. What do you just say, man? I'm fucking pissed off about that shit. Bro, thank you for coming on the show, though. Dude, real, it's an honor to be on here, dude. Bro. I've probably watched like fucking 30 <laughs> podcasts of you guys, bro, honestly. I appreciate it, bro. This was a good ass episode. Hell yeah, too. dude. This I feel like it went good. Episode. It went good. I Very was so good. nervous at first, but bro, it was so natural. No reason to be nervous. No, dude. It's an hour and a half, and you didn't even dude, realize. Dude, we killed it. <laughs> we killed good it. Fucking shit. Hell bro. yeah. Bro. I appreciate you again, dude. Seriously. Appreciate you, dog. Hell yeah. I already know. Hell yeah. And y'all motherfuckers already know the drill. Tired of saying the shit. Before I say the corny shit, follow Forget Her on Instagram. I'm going to have it down below. Click that little follow button. If you don't, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you. Like, comment, subscribe. All the corny bullshit. Stay tuned for next week's episode. Y'all motherfuckers know the drill. Pip World episode 150. Or wait. 106? Wait, no, 106. Why the fuck I say 150? <laughs> episode 106, bro. Toodaloo, motherfuckers. My brain's fried. I'll catch you guys. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You a motherfucking phenom And nobody gone You gon' through and spend too long You up too far Say it's good all I